Kansas lead singer Ronnie Platt says the biggest star he ever met was also the nicest. That and other members of Kansas in this clip on Rock History Music. Let's look at Kansas and where are they now as far as the popularity of their music. Interestingly, sometimes when a song reaches number one in, say, 1975, and is clearly, in 75, their biggest song, it doesn't mean it'll be their biggest song in the present day. Standing the test of time, well, there's no guarantees. Was the song featured in a movie, on TV, the current zeitgeist? The biggest streaming platform is arguably Spotify. Let's look at where the songs from Kansas stand. At number 10, All I Wanted, which is from 1986, from the Power album, sitting pretty at two million hits. The Wall from Left Overture in 1976. 6.1, Fight Fire with Fire, is from Drastic Measures, 1983. Leaning on 4 million. Hold on from Audio Visions from 1980. That one's leaning into 5 million. What's on my mind? That's Left Overture 1976 at 6.1. The title song to Point of No Return, which got a lot of airplay. 1977. 16 million. Vinyl Confessions at number 4, 1982. And Play the Game Tonight. The single version from Carry On Wayward Son is at 65 million at number 3, but the original version, which is the version that real Kansas fans always want, is at 642 million streams. Carry On Wayward Son, Left Overture 1976. Interestingly, Dust in the Wind has edged it out by a pretty good margin at 730 million from Point of No Return in 1977. By the way, through the years, uh, it, it, it who has surprised you? You've met a lot of people through what you've done. Uh, of the iconic rock stars that yeah, I've met? Yeah, or anybody. Or anybody that... You, you know, it, it, it's so funny for me to... It, it, it's surreal because I've played so many bands' music through the years, you know, whereas, uh, you know... I played sticks. I played Boston, you know, uh, and, and to meet these guys now, to, you know, we do a show with, with sticks and Don Felder and I'm sitting at the catering table across the <laughs> table from JY and Tom, Tom, Tommy Shaw, you know, and I'm like, this is kind of surreal, you know? Uh, but I, I, I've never really been like starstruck until I'll admit, I was starstruck when we played one of the cruises and Roger Daltrey was on. You know, to me, that's the that upper echelon tier of just rock superstardom. And he couldn't have been nicer. And I, I mean, I, I didn't get to have a conversation with him. We actually just passed each other in a stairwell. I said, you know, and I was just so starstruck and like, Mr. Daltrey, how are you? And he's, oh, mate, you sound great. You know, he said something really nice to me. And it's like, I just passed Roger Daltrey. I just rubbed elbows with yeah. Roger Daltrey. Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I was really starstruck by, by Roger and he blew me away. I went to both his shows on the ship, and he was fantastic. Uh, James Ryan asked you, did you get a chance to talk to Brian May when you guys worked with Queen? Oh, all the time. Um, again, they were just getting started. Um, uh, their first yeah. tour in the United States was with Mott the Hoople. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen because somebody got got sick in Queen, got hepatitis. And so we got stuck on the bill with, with Mott the Hoople. And you didn't have media like you have today where that news traveled extremely slow. So first couple of weeks, of course, the, um, sheer heart, heart attack was starting to explode. But nobody knew that they weren't coming. And so... We'd go out on stage, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Kansas, the crowd is instantly pissed off. And I, I, on my deathbed, I will hear people screaming, Quay! <laughs> um, and that's where we, we learned a valuable thing about on stage is play loud and don't stop.
in between songs, boom, next song, and just wear them down. But then the Queen comes over, their next tour, and we open for them. And so we didn't have really, we hadn't really done much, and they hadn't, they were still broke. And so we all just kind of hung out. Um, just two bands trying to make it. Uh, Memories of Freddie? Uh, they were all great. Mm -hmm. um, just great guys. Uh, yeah, we, we knew nothing about Freddie being gay or anything. And it really wouldn't have mattered anyway. But um, it was just a lot of fun. Roger Taylor uh, was not listed, but he sang uh, back on a couple of Kansas songs when we were working with John Elefante, uh, like uh, Play the Game Tonight. The, the, the uh, choruses, the highest voice is Roger Taylor. Because um, we're all buddies and he was in town. Um, John Deacon w was a, a very quiet guy. Not so much him. Brian was just such a proper British gentleman. Very nice guy. I interesting. Freddie was a, a good guy. <laughs> um, yeah, we're always a lot of times staying in the same hotel and traveling sort of together. I think the funniest thing I remember is every time we'd, we'd meet in a restaurant somewhere on the road, it's kind of traveling in tandem. And they always ate cheese and tomato sandwiches. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they were afraid of American meat or they were vegetarians or what, but cheese and tomato. You know, four, please. <laughs> um, Really good guys. Um, an odd mix up. When I first saw that we were doing the tour, tour and sh saw that uh, the album cover of them, you know, kind of in drag, I thought, oh my God, this isn't going to go well. And, you know, that was just my mid Midwestern, Midwestern fear and bigotry against anything that wasn't Midwestern, I guess. And they were just wonderful guys. The guys that uh, you looked up to uh, in the early days. Well, for violin, uh, obviously Jean Luc Ponty is like the the father or the grandfather of electric violin. Uh, Jerry Goodman had a huge influence on me because he didn't he played gritty. He didn't play perfect. He had this rock and roll kind of vibe to his playing that so many string players are obsessed with everything being perfect and kind of sterile. In my opinion, he just had this wild abandon that spoke to me and i hadn't heard anyone play that way when i heard him with mahavishnu uh sugarcane harris who played with zappa in the 60s just the bluesiest grittiest violin playing um and i, I was influenced by a lot of guitar players because i play guitar too mm -hmm. in kansas I, I play guitar as well like steve Vai, nuno betancourt obviously eddie van halen jimmy hendrix jimmy page i think they all influenced my violin playing as much as my guitar playing what musician surprised you more? And that can mean anything you want. Well, I, I would say, you know, meeting uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards was a right. shock. Because? Well, we're uh, in the summer of 68. I mean, 78. We did two shows with the Rolling Stones. Uh, one was in Cleveland at the baseball stadium, baseball football stadium, before they tore it down. And that was cool. But then we played in Boulder, Colorado a month or so later. And that was in the football stadium. Not, I don't know how many people you could fit between the stadium and the entire football field. Hundreds and some thousand people. And we're in our dressing room. It's probably, I don't know, afternoon is four maybe. And just getting dressed and warmed up and stuff and I'm standing there, we cut up playing, noodling and stuff. And you hear, also hear this roar. Uh, I look out, they had built this kind of a tent city, you know, on the uh, grass of the football field. And I looked out yeah, through the screen, and here comes this entourage of limo. I'm sure each one came in their own limo. And everybody's screaming. I thought, okay, well, here comes the stones. And just all of a sudden, our, the tent door opens, and Mick and Keith just walk in. And they're going, hello, gents. Glad you're on the show. Love your band. 
Uh, if there's anything you need, you know, just let us know. Again, we are welcome to our show. Um, I said nothing. I stood there slack jawed, and words would not come out. I just was frozen in in total awe. And they were such they were nicely dressed, and the they were not these bad boys of rock and roll. They were just British gentlemen. And I just didn't know how to handle any of that. It was such a shock. Was that the moment? Was there another moment or was that it? That was it? Yeah, it was just meeting these two guys. Well, then I, you know, I got to stand on stage. I could reach out and touch the, the piano player's back. I was so close. Taking pictures from the side of the stage, Jerry Hall is shoulder to shoulder with me on the side of the stage. It's like, yeah, th this is a strange day. Surreal, huh? Yeah, it was. Um, and I I hate to say this, and if Jerry Hall hears this, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be offensive. She was gorgeous. And she, you know, like six foot one, Texas born blonde model. But she had the biggest feet I've ever seen. They were skinny and long, like a, a six foot elves feet in these weird looking shoes. And I, I kept wanting to take a picture of her feet. <laughs> Nobody's going to fucking believe this. And I chickened out, you know, I thought I, if, if she catches me taking a picture of her feet, the stones bouncers are going to just throw me off the back of the stage. So I never did, but somewhere I've got about a hundred photos of the stones from my perspective. Nicky Hopkins, I could I could kiss him on the neck. He's so close. Uh, most embarrassing thing, Daryl Strummer of Genesis said he fell off stage. I said everyone's fallen off stage, but most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you on stage. See, I, I saved the kooky questions till the end. Well, it's you know it's always those technical glitches that in the moment you're just humiliated and you're just like you want to just explain it all to everyone. It's not my fault. You know, when the millennium Falcon doesn't go into hyperspace, you know, you're just like, no, this is not my fault. It's supposed to work. And, and so, um, yeah, it's. Billy Joel it's, says you do it again. So it means you meant it. You make the mistake. Right. Again. Yeah. And, and so I think we, we rely on computers. Uh, you know, I, a lot of the sounds that I play yeah. on my keyboards are, are driving tone banks on the computer that um, are, give me the ability to recreate like a dozen sounds at any given time with four keyboards, that kind of, that's the, that's the plus. The minus is that you're working with computers and they can be unpredictable. So there are times when you go to hit your big moment and nothing comes out. That happened, uh, I filled in on keys for a couple shows with, uh, for Dennis DeYoung and the music of Sticks, And Sometimes the, I have a lot of work to do because he wants to just go out and, and sing lead on a song and not worry so much about the keyboard. So there's plenty to do, even with Dennis on keys. And certain sound effects like intros to Mr. Roboto or something, there, somebody tripped the power between the sound check and the show and erased the bank or something. And I went to hit the, the intro and, and, I'm, and nothing is happening. And Dennis is looking back at me like, oh, are you are you not doing this right or something? And, and I'm like pointing to my finger <laughs> playing the keys that are supposed to trigger the sound. Oh, and I'm like, it's not happening. And so he's such a pro that he, he makes a joke out of it and says, Oh, we bought that keyboard at radio shack anyway. <laughs> so that's, you know, he, he knew how to just keep it going and we came back to it. So it, th those technical glitches really make you sweat, but sometimes it, it, there's nothing you can do except just to, say hey look this is technology sometimes there are technical difficulties and please stand by outside of phil who who was it in the band that you had a uh, uh, a camaraderie with like that you uh... uh me and dave hope we were you know carrie was the kind of the the writer standing on the other side of the room contemplating life um Robbie was standing on the other side of the street, being quintessentially Robbie, unashamedly so at all times. Uh, 
never was all in, although he was all in. But he was he was always the contrarian, I would say. Me and Dave were the the nuts, balls, and pecker of this band. We were the rude, crude, did not care. I mean, somebody came comes into the song, and we didn't like the lyric. We just started making fun of it. Uh, Dave Hope was one of the the funniest, most crude, gross guys of I've ever met. We laughed and laughed and laughed. There was nothing. Thank God there was no political correctness back then because we were a zillion miles from it. Um, we all were. Yeah. It, but, I mean, my God, did we la- all laugh. And, and <laughs> me and Dave and Phil together, um, I'm surprised la- the laughter didn't kill us sometimes. <laughs> but the, the, those things were necessary. Those, you know, Steve was from another area you know st joe missouri which at the time might as well have been china you know the the world was a lot the towns were further apart then and the worlds were smaller um and he was a bit more moody but the the three of us i mean we, we played in a band in 1969 1970 in the french quarter of new orleans we lived there and played a house band in a place called the roach um, we, uh, we delivered Jerry Garcia to his hotel on Bourbon Street after they'd played at the warehouse. We took him back to the hotel. He walked in the door and got busted. Thus the song Truckin'. Busted on Bourbon Street. I let, I was the guy that lit him off at the door. <laughs> um, we have so many stories before Kansas me and Dave Hope played in several bands to de- together, all in matching suits, you know, playing the young rascals. Um, we, ha- we have lifetimes of stories. It, again, even before Kansas was a thought. Remember, you can get early access to all our videos if you join our Patreon. If you want to make a donation to the channel, there's a link in the description. And buy swag, buy a t-shirt, a cap. T-tops, a lot of different things, even rock history music coats at our swag store, link in the description. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and of course, share them on social media. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. 